Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. One of the topics that we're going to discuss is stripe rust in wheat. If you raise wheat, you know what a big problem this disease can be. We'll give you some answers for it today. We'll also give you some answers when it comes to continuous corn. If you're going to raise corn this coming year and you just raised corn last year in the same field, there are a few extra things you need to do as opposed to when you're in rotation. We'll talk about that today. We've also got a tough to control wheat of the week and iron talk will be coming up a little later in the show. But first, here's our farm basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgrow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the upcoming Ag PhD Winter Workshops. Well, every winter we do some workshops around the country and Brian and I like to talk about what's going to help us make more money on the farm for next year and get into some discussions with farmers all over. Well, one of the biggest topics this year is how do we cut expenses? We've got a lot of ways to cut expenses on the farm and still get good yields. Yep, so the title of most of our workshops this winter is going to be 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses Today. We'll go through a variety of different things depending on the location of the workshop. So in other words, if you're in heavy wheat country, we're not going to spend our whole day talking about soybeans or anything like that. But we just want you to understand if you are a farmer, we'd love to have you attend any of our workshops. That's just one that we've got going in a number of different locations. And you can go to agphd.com to check out all these locations and times and pre-register. Well, the big thing, Brian, before I move on to the next one is just how do you cut expenses that aren't making you money? How do you use cheaper alternatives that'll make you just as much money? Those types of things. We don't want to hurt our return on investment on the farm. We still want to make money and make good yields while we're doing it. We are going to do three other workshops just at Baltic this year. Uh, that's right at the Ag PhD Field Day site, and those are Advanced Pest Management, secrets of high yield fields, and what your fertilizer dealer won't tell you. Now, with any of our workshops, we just want you to understand, we do these workshops more than anything to say thank you to you for watching our show for so many years, listening to us on the radio, following us, subscribing to the magazine. We really, really appreciate that. And we love the opportunity to get to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and to meet with you as a large group at any of these workshops. We also, again, take your questions every day on the Ag PhD radio show, and that's where a lot of the, uh, the questions that we're looking at, at covering on the Ag PhD winter workshops come from is, well, how do we do this? We've got resistance showing up, not just in weeds, but also in insects right now. And we talk about advanced pest management strategies. There's new products that are coming out that are better, that are safer to beneficials. There are new ways of doing things that we want to discuss. All our workshops are free, but we really would like you to pre-register just to make sure we have enough agronomy books and enough food and chairs for everyone. Well, we hope to see you at one of the Ag PhD Winter Workshops this year, and one of our topics might just be controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? College students often get the short end of the stock when it comes to paying for an education. I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD, and if you seek a career in agriculture, I have great news. My brother Brian and I are hosting our first ever collegiate agronomy workshop. In addition to agricultural information, we provide you the chance to walk away with a college scholarship. The best part? Attendance is free. The workshop is on Thursday, January 3rd at the Morton Center in Baltic, South Dakota. For more information and to register, go to agphd.com. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. We started utilizing the Dual React system this year. You can adjust your speed and it automatically adjusts your sprayer tips. So you can slow down and you aren't building up huge droplets or you can speed up and you're not throwing a mist that's drifting. Hypro. 
helping you spray better. Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10 34 0. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed, and never miss. You'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. What were the worst pest problems on your farm this year? And what can you do to stop them once and for all? Hi, I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD. On Monday, January 14th, on our farm near Baltic, South Dakota, we'll be holding a free Ag PhD Advanced Pest Management Workshop. We'll bring you the most in-depth coverage on how to scout for and control the pests that are keeping you from maximum yields. You'll learn the best ways to solve resistance issues, keep your fields cleaner both now and in the future, and improve your yields immediately with better pest management. Registration is now open at agphd.com. Over the years, we've had a lot of people say, well, you know, crop rotation is really important because in continuous corn, you can't get as high a yield as when you rotate with soybeans or some other crop. And I would just say, I don't believe that's true at all. There are some things you can do to make continuous corn as good or even better than when you're in rotation. Well, why do farmers say I get less yield with continuous corn versus corn soybean rotation because they have in the past but it's not just because it was on corn ground that you got lower yields it's that something wasn't quite right it could be a number of different factors we'll cover a bunch of them today the first one i'm going to start with is fertility when you think about fertility coming off a corn rotation versus coming off a soybean rotation typically there's less nitrogen left over. Coming after that corn, it's, it's a heavy user of all the nutrients, but nitrogen is one that we see if you're in continuous corn, you're gonna need more. Now here's another reason why you're gonna need more nitrogen, because you've got all that carbon out in your field from all the corn stalk residue. Whether you left the stalks no-till or whether you tilled them in, you've got a lot of high carbon material there that needs nitrogen for the microbes to break it down. So we do need to put more nitrogen out in a continuous corn situation. Often we'll talk about 50 extra pounds, but it could vary a little bit depending on where you're at and what your yield goals are. So nitrogen is a real key. If you don't have that extra nitrogen, you're not gonna be able to break down that high carbon residue. This is more of a problem when you go to no-till, strip-till, reduced-till, as opposed to back in the old days, if you would mow board plow, you'd really chop up that residue and a lot of that nitrogen would become available in year one that is still in those stalks and a lot of those stalks would be broken down much quicker because of all the bacteria that you put together with it that's in the soil. I, again, I just really focus on nitrogen. That's the number one thing on the fertility side. On the insect side, the number one thing is rootworms. You have to have a plan for corn rootworms. There is no rescue option. You have to do it early. You have to start either at planting time with a traded product or with insecticide or both. So I would just tell you on our farm, I'm using smart stacks and we're using at least a reduced rate of an insecticide whenever we go continuous corn. One other thing that makes a big difference, Brian, is getting seed placement done just right. Now, if you're going into soybean stubble like the field we're standing in today, no problem. You hardly have any residue at all. You can slice right through it. Everything's gonna be great. But if you're going through corn stalks, even if you've done some tillage out there, you're gonna have some big chunks of stalk. You're gonna have some root balls it's not going to be perfect then if you don't have that perfect seed placement you're going to have uneven emergence and your yield is going to suffer so whatever you're doing make sure you're set up with your planter to clear that residue out of the way have a nice even seed bed keep it so your gauge wheels can keep running smooth so you can get consistent depth and seed placement 
if you want to have successful continuous corn yields. The other big thing that I see in continuous corn is more disease pressure. Now I'm most worried about diseases like Goss's wilt that are bacterial and if you don't have a bacteria side, which for most of us we don't have a good one we can use, then what are you going to do? Well about the only thing you can do is plant a really tolerant variety. So make sure you're talking to your seed dealer to say, hey I'm going to go continuous corn, I want something that's good for Goss's wilt and preferably for some of the other tough corn diseases. You want to have a good defensive hybrid. Also I would strongly consider spraying fungicide even if you don't on all your acres I probably would at least on my continuous corn acres. On years where it's dry or drier than normal that seems to be the year that that gives that type of year gives continuous corn the most challenge because corn really does draw quite a bit of moisture out of the ground. Now this year we're going into an opposite situation in many parts of the country where we were overly wet and getting corn harvest done there's ruts out in fields. Guys were pushing it trying to get things out in many cases. You're going to have to watch that compaction and, and fix those areas up for sure. But going into next season it appears there's plenty of moisture in the soil where the outlook for continuous corn acres is pretty good. The last thing that I'll leave you with is this. When a lot of people say, well, continuous corn, I don't know if that really works very well, let's keep in mind that some of the very best, highest yielding corn producers in the history of the world have been continuous corn farmers. It can work, but again you've got to look really hard at extra nitrogen, especially for the first few years of a continuous corn situation. You've got to look at variety selection. If you don't get the right varieties you're going to have problems with diseases like Goss's wilt. And then finally I, I take a real hard look at what is my overall tillage program and just like Darren said making sure that I can get that seed planted just right. If you do that and follow some of the things we talked about today we think continuous corn can work out fantastically well in most situations. Well, another thing that's really important with continuous corn is weed control. We'll show you how to stop our weed of the week later in the show. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Fertility is one of the biggest expenses on your farm, but is that money being put to its best use? What is your fertilizer dealer not telling you? Hi, I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD. Are you getting sold products that don't make you money? Are you depleting your soil and heading for disaster? We'll answer all these questions and more at the Ag PhD workshop called What Your Fertilizer Dealer Won't Tell You. Fertilizer may be your biggest expense, but to turn it into an investment, find out how at our workshop Tuesday, January 15th on our farm near Baltic, South Dakota. Registration is now open at agphd.com. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm, because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. When it comes to foliar diseases in wheat, about the worst one you can get is stripe rust. We're going to talk about stripe rust and how to keep it off of your farm today. 
Well, the only good news here is stripe rust is a fungal disease. With fungal diseases, we can use fungicides and generally get them under control. The only thing that we always caution you about with fungicides is, well, I guess two things, really. Number one, you've got to be preventative. You have to be early. If you already see the disease, you are too late. You've already lost a bunch of yield. And number two, with fungicides, just keep in mind, they don't move well in the plant. It's not like fungicides are systemic like certain herbicides are. Fungicides are basically going to stay where you put them. So if you don't get every leaf on the plant covered, well, the leaves that aren't covered are unprotected. And keep in mind that any new growth that comes out after you spray is also unprotected. So you may have to make multiple applications for diseases like stripe rust. When stripe rust first started to become a big problem in the United States, we were told, well, it's not going to overwinter in the north, so it really has to blow up every year. Now, in some areas, that's held true to form. In the Dakotas, for example, yeah, we don't normally see stripe rust until later in the season, generally around flag leaf time or later, but it could be a little earlier depending on the year. But in other areas that have a milder climate, whether it's the Pacific Northwest or the central states in the United States, we have seen some stripe rust overwintering. So we do want to really watch for this uh, early season to make sure we aren't seeing a problem out there. We want to get ahead of it, as Brian mentioned. We aren't very good at curative disease control, but we are pretty good with preventative treatment. So don't fall prey to, well, it's got to blow up. It's never been in my area before. Still get out there and scout early in the season to make sure that stripe rust isn't getting a foothold in your fields. The big problem with stripe rust is it takes a lot of yield. There's common rust also. There are many different types of rust, but common rust we've sprayed for for years in wheat and we gain a little bit of yield. But with stripe rust, many times we're gaining 15 bushels, maybe 20 bushels, so it's a huge thing. The two big questions I get from people are, number one, when exactly should I spray? And number two, which fungicide should I use? Well, the other one, Brian, is which variety of wheat should I plant? And there are some differences in terms of tolerance or even resistance with some varieties. Here's the problem though, Stripe rust really adapts pretty quickly. So varieties that a few years ago we thought, yep, that's a great one. We don't see much stripe rust in that. Uh, it's getting infected now. So it, it may change over the years. Stay in touch with what research is being done in your area on farms and in university trials to find the best variety first. In terms of when to spray, it's going to vary depending on the year. What we care about most is that we're spraying before we see the disease, like I said earlier. So you just kind of have to look at in your general area, when is this disease showing up? What we've tried to do on our farm is we're just spraying automatically at three timings, at herbicide timing, at flag leaf, and then again at heading. And if I spray at all three timings, I don't have a lot of worry. In terms of which fungicides to use for preventative control for stripe rust protection, the best ones have got multiple modes of action. We've really had good luck with Triva Pro, with Stratego, uh, with Preaxor, they've all been highly effective. Or you could even mix your own, but I would strongly encourage you, don't run with a single mode of action. We're very concerned about resistance with this disease, and we're also concerned about getting long-lasting control, and putting multiple modes of action out there is the best way to do that. Well, once again, stripe rust is one of the worst diseases you can get in wheat. I don't know exactly when you're gonna have to spray, because it can show up at any time during the year. It's possible this disease might be able to overwinter in your area, which would mean you'd have to spray earlier than I might necessarily on my farm, when I can usually get by with some of the later applications, you might have to go early and late. Again, remember that fungicides don't last long in the plant. They don't move through the plant. So you're most likely, if you have a big stripe rust problem in your area, you're most likely going to have to spray multiple times for this tough fungal disease. Well, let's hope you don't have to spray multiple times to control our weed of the week. We'll show you which products would work best the first time coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now?
Our weed of the week is buckthorn. All right, not to be confused with buckbrush. Buckthorn is a little different, and probably the worst thing about buckthorn is that it's a host for soybean aphids. We see soybean aphids overwintering on buckthorn, and it's one of those plants that you just didn't realize that you had uh, unless you're looking for it. All right, so the problem with buckthorn is it's a perennial, it's a woody species. You know, I'd love to be able to go use Tordon or Chaparral or Milestone, one of those types of products on this. Uh, I would say Chaparral is probably the best, but you have to be really concerned about what crops are around you and even trees. Like Tordon, for example, is going to kill most tree species. Milestone will kill quite a few. So you have to be really careful about which product you're going to use to kill buckthorn. Now, if for some reason buckthorn got out, got out into your cultivated fields, which normally doesn't happen, I would run with a high rate of Roundup, or if they're really small plants, just try and dig them up with some tillage or, or go hand pull them because you don't want them to get started out in your field. Well, once again, our biggest concern with buckthorn is just that it will host soybean aphids. So if you're really that worried about it, one of the things you could do is certainly go out and cut these plants and just eliminate them that way if they're in a grove of trees, if they're in an area where you can use something like chaparral, that would be excellent. That's our preferred method of control. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, buckthorn. But Iron Talk is coming up next. How can you cut farm expenses in 2019 and still yield well? Which input expenses are just that, expenses? And which inputs will give you great weed, insect, and disease control and give you a great return on your investment? These are big questions this season and we'll answer them at the free Ag PhD 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses workshops. We'll take a close look at every kind of farm expense. So if saving money is important to you, come to Ag PhD's 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses workshops. Registration is now open at agphd.com. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike Technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nema Strike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources. The research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Commodity Classic is an early adopter's paradise. This is where what's next happens, where you can meet the people who are changing the way you farm. From the jaw-dropping trade show, to outstanding educational sessions, to one-on-one -on -one conversations with other farmers from across the nation, you'll be among the first to experience the new ideas, innovations, and technology that can help your operation stay profitable in times of challenge and change. Be in Orlando February 28th through March 2nd at the 2019 Commodity Classic. Visit commodityclassic.com. Next year, diesel will need to contain a 20% mix consisting of soybean and corn oil or other renewable resources in Minnesota. This is great news for farmers. I'm Bruce Volland with Volland Oil. For years, I've been telling farmers about the benefits of using biodiesel. It costs less, it's a product farmers grow, it is better for the environment, and it has a higher lubricity, which reduces wear. If you want to know more about the benefits of using biodiesel, give me a call at 529-5458. At Volland Oil, we proudly deliver biodiesel.
Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. In this week's Iron Talk, we'll discuss the topic of noise and how it can affect your hearing. This is an important subject for farmers to understand because next to airport workers, no occupation suffers more hearing loss than farmers. Even if you're a younger farmer, chances are that you have enough exposure already to loud noises to cause some degree of hearing loss. Today, we'll share with you how noise is quantified, where you're most at risk for hearing loss, and talk about how to protect yourself now and for years to come. Noise is everywhere on the farm, from a skid loader cleaning out livestock pens to a tractor in the field. As a farmer, you have no choice but to be right in the middle of all the noise from time to time. You understand that it's loud, but how loud is too loud? Noise is quantified by the decibel scale. Every 10 decibel increase is twice as loud a noise. For example, if you hear a noise, it needs to be at least 10 decibels. Leaves rustling in the fall breeze is considered to be a 40 decibel sound. Some of us talk louder than others, but the conversation at the coffee shop is about 60 decibels. Now we could sit there and listen and talk all day, and even that loud guy from out of town wouldn't damage our hearing. However, if you're working around equipment, it could be another story. A jackhammer makes a noise at 130 decibels. A shotgun can be 150 decibels or more. Even common tools used in the farm shop like an impact wrench or a circular saw can make noise at greater than 100 decibels. According to the National Safety Council, noises at less than 85 decibels for an 8-hour day are safe for the average person. Newer tractor cabs keep equipment noise in the acceptable range, provided the windows are closed. Remember, though, a 10 10 decibel increase represents twice as loud a noise. An average diesel truck, for example, operates at 95 decibels. That's twice as loud as that 85. That's a normal, safe range. And remember, those shop tools, they're running at 100 decibels or more, so they're even louder. Our biggest tip for today, protect your hearing. Whether you use the little foam earplugs or a fancy headset, doing something is really important. So how much protection do you need? Well, it depends on the job you're going to do and the noise reduction rating, or the NRR, of the hearing protection device. You can find good protection of a 20 or 30 decibel reduction. Also, Active Noise Reduction, or ANR, earmuff protection can electronically cancel out unpleasant noise. The other thing you can do is simply limit the amount of time you're around loud noises. If you have a lot of cutting to do with a circular saw, spread out your work over several hours or even several days. Breaking up long periods of noise exposure can reduce your stress level and protect your hearing. In review, other than airport workers, farming is the number one occupation for hearing loss. Protect your hearing with earmuffs, headsets, or even foam earplugs, and limit the duration of your exposure to loud noises. Follow these guidelines to keep your hearing for years to come. It's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. If you're looking for more agronomic information that can help you on your farm, we've got our show every weekday at 2 p.m. Central where we answer your live phone calls. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.